For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So next up is electronegativity. So as far as the definition goes, electronegativity is the relative ability or tendency of an atom to withdraw or pull electrons or electron density towards itself across a chemical bond. So if two atoms are bound together and one is more electronegative than the other, the more electronegative atom will pull electrons or the electron density towards itself. Okay. So what's the trend on the periodic table? Okay. Well, electronegativity of an, of an atom or an element um, increases up and to the right. Okay. And this excludes the noble gases because um, they really don't. Well, actually, I have the question here. Why don't we consider the electronegativity of the noble gases? And the reason why is because they they don't really form compounds. Um, I've seen xenon form compounds, but it doesn't form very many. The point is that, uh, especially the smaller ones like helium um, and neon, they don't really form uh, compounds or argon. I've never seen them form compounds. So they're not going to bond to another atom, right? So if they can't bond to another atom, they have no relative ability to withdraw or pull electrons towards themselves, right? Um, but so the question though is why is it that that ability increases up and to the right on the periodic table, right? Why is that? Let's just reveal this, right? Just so we have a visual, right? And of course, we're excluding the noble gases, right? But yeah, why, why is that? Well, let's think about atomic size. The smaller an atom is, the closer its nucleus is to the electrons in the chemical bond. And the more able the positively charged nucleus is to attract those electrons in that bond. Okay, so let's think about this example here between um, HF, right, hydrofluoric acid and HCl, hydrochloric acid. Here uh, I've shown I've drawn the Lewis structures for hydrofluoric acid and for uh, hydrochloric acid. If you don't know what that really is, this is just a depiction of the hydrogen atom and the fluorine atom uh, bound here. So there are electrons in in this little line here, and same idea over here. In fact, I'll just leave that there, uh, and same idea here. There are electrons in this little line, right? A pair of electrons, and so um, what what we're gonna basically think about between HF and HCl is their size differences. So HF is um, is shown here by this little green, uh, the, the green circle, right? Or the green sphere, it should be a sphere, but it's in 2D. Um, and with the HCl, that's going to be a little bit bigger, right? It's right below it. I've exaggerated the difference in size. It's not drawn to scale or anything. But what's key to think about is that there are electrons between these two atoms okay there are electrons right here these electrons that i just mentioned right in that bond they're the same same ones right there okay they're in between the two spheres okay the same idea over here actually right there are electrons in there okay and so these nuclei are going to pull on the electrons that are between uh the two atoms right and so are these. These guys are going to pull on the electron density between them. Okay. Now, how close the nucleus's positive charge is to those electrons is pretty important because electrostatic force is inversely related to the distance between the two charges. So if the two charges are closer, the electrostatic force is greater. Okay. So what we what we reveal here, if we look at the radius. The radius of fluorine is, is small compared to the radius of chlorine, which is a little bit bigger, right? So what happens is that fluorine's positively charged nucleus is closer 
to the electrons in the chemical bond between it and hydrogen, right? So it can pull them across the bond towards itself more than chlorine can, okay? And that has a lot to do with its, its size. Now, both of them are pretty electronegative atoms, though. If we think about the idea that they're, the reason they're part, part of the reason they're also pulling electron density towards themselves is because they, they, they kind of want to reach something like a noble gas configuration ish kind of thing. Um, so if they pull those electron density, that electron density towards themselves, then they, they feel like they have extra electrons. So they're closer to that ideal stable conformation. Or, or configuration rather okay now um, there's always the question of what's the most electronegative element and that is fluorine okay that's something worth knowing um, and electronegativity is a relative ability uh, to withdraw or pull electron density towards itself uh, fluorine is the best at doing that so if fluorine is a is in a bond with anything else it's going to pull the electrons towards it more than the other atom it's bound to is so, um, and there's actually a scale, like fluorine's um, electronegativity is 4.0, and everything is, is relative to this 4.0. Um, the second most is oxygen. Uh, it's a close second with 3.5, I believe. Okay. Now, what's the least electronegative atom? Or you can think about it as the most electropositive atom, although that term is used much less frequently. Uh, it's gonna be the biggest, um, element right the biggest atom and that'll be uh, francium although um, I've read some people say that because francium is is really really rare it's often just taken to be cesium because cesium is more uh, more prevalent but um, I'm gonna go with francium here okay okay cool but now hang on a second wait a minute didn't we say that electron affinity described how attracted an atom was to electrons how is that different from what we just talked about here in electronegativity? Well, to answer that question and kind of clear up the differences in a little uh, comparison, check out the next video. Anyway, I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.